G'day, this is Captain Oob, and this is a Modern Warfare Striker 45. It looks a little bit like a UMP 45, but isn't quite there. Now, I thought in the Modern Warfare games, they use the real names of all the real weapons, but this must be them, you know, spilling in some fictional stuff, because, I don't know, UMPs aren't that cool anymore, or rather, licensing problems? I don't really know. I'm not going to speculate anymore. Let's get into the attachments. So, this is a highly customizable standalone Submachine gun type weapon, commando um, based because it's automatic, you can suppress it if you want to, which is great. Custom sounds and animations, pretty good, and some Call of Duty perks to make it feel like you're playing a different game. There's a lot of people out there that don't like people playing Fallout 4 as like a Call of Duty game or overly tactical bullet thing, but honestly, it's a valid way to play and it's a cool way to play. If I see gameplay on Ardent, on Arden's channel, he's got a little tactical setup. He's got dark nights, he's got tactical lights, a couple of tactical looking followers. They're dressed up in all of this uh, modern military stuff. It's actually really cool. So, the good thing about mods in this game is you can play it exactly how you want and you can do things which the game wouldn't allow you to do normally. And no one can say shit about it unless they're in the comments section. So, you know, nothing will get nerfed unnecessarily and destroy your fun in the game. Anyway, so the blueprint is like your receivers here, but instead of changing it, through like the standard means you just get different colors and as you scroll down through these ones you get higher damage I've got a couple of favorites here I like turbulence I like undertaker uh, the rest of them are not great I, I especially don't like this uh, this one because it's a fucking weeb trash gun I was, I was gonna say is that a PlayStation buttons all over that not quite that's pretty infringing on Sony's copyright issues also evil manifest is there it's white I don't know if that's supposed to be a reference to the clan, but it does a lot of damage. But honestly, we don't need that much because there's another way to increase the damage. Let's just chuck this on Undertaker. That's actually the same damage as Evil Manifest anyway, and doesn't compromise on this thing's looks. And we can chuck on some stocks here. They do pretty much that. This thing looks like it's going to be uh, the most uh, steady of the uh, stocks here. And it says, keeps drain steady for precision shots. Now, it's not giving me a little bit of a prefix here to say it's recall compensated or marksman. So, we'll have to take the uh, description's word for it. And some of them have some flavor text as well. Like this one says, for when fast reflexes mean the difference between life and death. Now, you'd think that'd give you like the Deadeye legendary effect on this. But it doesn't. But, you know, a little bit of, uh, I guess flavor text to add a little bit of flavor to it it's, this one says mobility with exceptional stability which is not really a thing in terms of how a gunplay works in fallout 4 unless it, you think it's accuracy and range but that's a little bit of a stretch and recoil isn't on this uh on the weapon card here unfortunately but it'd be cool if uh we could we could see that um although how would you even quantify that you would put it in numbers like the higher the number the more recoil Maybe it's better off not there. Anyway, so the magazines, it gets a little bit more interesting. You've got the standard, which gives you uh, the same amount of rounds. You can have a 45 uh, rounds in it, restacked in a box mag uh, set up there. And you can have a 45 uh, hollow point 12 round mag, which gives you a two round burst, just like the thing in Call of Duty. See, so, yeah, I looked on the wiki, I did my research. So we'll use that for a different one. Maybe we'll chuck a scope on it and uh, attach a couple of the faster reloading perks. But... For our automatic one, we'll just go for the 45 round mag. There seems to be no other better option for that. We can increase the barrel length to 400 millimeters. Thanks for using the, uh, the uh, I guess, metric system here. And I guess the barrel means all the way back here as well, because that is not 400 mil, I'll tell you that much. 400 mil is almost half a bloody meter. Now, that's definitely not a half a meter barrel looking there. Anyway, so you can chuck on some of these sights. You've got a, a, a basic air tech here. They've all got these uh, funky, I guess, generic names to not infringe on copyright. Like, I recognize some of these. Like, there's a Viper one, which is what they call a, a Cobra red dot sight. And Battlefield, they've got a little T reticule on those. And then there's like a PSO thing down here. The, yeah, it looks like a PSO, to be honest. Now, I've found that the sights aren't actually all that aligned, but... For an automatic weapon like this, where you're going to have a constant update of where your bullets are landing thanks to its combat... Oh, combat. Sorry, I was reading stuff. Thanks to its um, bullet effects and where it hits, you can probably aim pretty well. And If you've got the uh, intimidation perk or the thing which you can pacify things, you don't have to worry about that. So if we chuck on the tactical suppressor, Ace Operator kicks in, which is nice, giving us uh, 290 damage, which is going to be absolutely devastating to anything. Um, yeah. Probably not the right time to call overpowered card, but 
you can chuck on laser sights to increase hip fire accuracy. Now this one says rolls remaining undetected, so maybe you could have a stronger hip fire accuracy out of this green one, but it will detect you easier. Enemies will detect you because they can see the green laser. Attack laser, which improves accuracy whilst aiming down sights. It seems to be clipping through the suppressor. No, it's not. It's fine. Don't worry about that. Uh, aiming down sights accuracy is generally good enough anyway, so I'm going to stay undetected with this one. We've already got a uh, suppressor on it, so we might as well keep it uh, undetected. And you can chuck on all these foregrips, which do appear on this weapon in the uh, game that where it comes from. The game of origin, I guess. And you cost plastic and helps you control recoil. That's helpful. Now, we've got the perks. Now this is where it starts getting a little bit more Call of Duty-like. So you can use uh, speed, which just says speed. Regenerates your action points faster. That sounds pretty good. Marathon increases the amount of action points. Sleight of hand is for faster relay. We'll be making use out of that with the, uh, the 12 round one. And we've got increased movement speed whilst aiming down sights. That's helpful, but not for me. Not for this one. We've got handling here. Uh, not, not really sure what that one does. This thing increases your carry weight. This uh, one makes you aim down sights a little bit quicker. That's not really a problem for uh, games like this where you don't need the lightning fast reflexes because generally AI is pretty dumb and I can tank a lot of bullets. So if I take a few bullets here and there, the old energy shields will kick in and absorb the damage and will not harm the user. Uh, we've got the steady aim for you. Extra hip fight accuracy, which sounds pretty great. And you've got uh, one that increases your VATS hit chance. It basically gives you the free uh, VATS enhanced legendary effect, which is potent for any VATS usage. Got resistance, I guess it increases your resistance. A blast shield, I guess, gives you the dense torso mod, but on your weapon, helpful. Faster HP regeneration for ICU. And nuclear born is giving you free rider resist, which is helpful for if you're in the glowing sea. And resilience is uh, to negate a little bit of fall damage. Yep, if you're familiar with COD, you could probably have guessed these just by the title of it. But yeah, they do have tangible benefits in Fallout 4, which is kind of a neat little thing here. They've, they've uh, crossed the uh, Fallout lines and uh, COD together in a reasonably uh, good fashion. Now you can prestige this to give it a little bit of a damage slider. So even the damage slider is not the generic plus 80% damage and blah blah blah. You get prestige ranks, which is in itself, I think it's pretty clever. I'm, I'm not thinking that's too bad. And you can change the camouflage, but unlike the, um, the uh, what is it, that double magged Chris Vector that I did the other day, um, these look a lot better and they actually require you to get things out there So you have to go outside and earn these things rather than having a giant pile of uh, settlement goods uh, or Junk in your settlement to get these things going although Queen Milak meat seems the easiest one to get because they drop four each time Or is it two each time? You have to kill two and a half uh, Milak Queens to get the gold paint on this which I guess is cool I guess it's a lining of its stomach you paint on your gun. Why not? And a legendary effect is there if you need it. At 290 damage, we will certainly not. But we'll grab a couple more of these so we can use them loud and proud and uh, suppressed, uh, I guess. And we'll start shooting stuff. Okay, so here we are outside of the Moonshiner Shack. And there she blows. We're actually outside of Immersive Gunners Plaza. Which, with the damage numbers that this thing is pushing out, I feel like we'll have a decent enough time taking out all of these gunners rather than going inside and killing them all in two minutes. This is what this thing looks like in third person. Note the uh, grip on the uh, front of the weapon there. It's actually reflected in uh, first person, which is pretty good. Bash animation looks like that. You're really, really hitting them with the stock there. That's one of the better animations I've ever seen. There's a sprint animation and the reload animation is like that. Now, the reload animation is for some reason really, really loud. It's actually louder than this thing sounds like when it's firing, when it's suppressed. But you'll notice if I go over to a weapon, a, a variant without a full grip, the grip on the weapon changes a little bit. So extra attention to detail has been made to, uh, yeah, it looks like this thing. You know, they've sorted out the animations to work with both foregrip and non-foregrip variants of the weapon, which is great attention to detail. Anyways, it's raining now, which increases our stealthing abilities, so we'll go ahead and do that. And we'll get started on these gunners. It's got fairly decent accuracy. I'm not getting a great line of sight on a sight picture of where I'm actually shooting at, because I feel like the reflex side is a little bit too bloomed and actually kind of blurry, to be honest. What's going on with that? And also, it's misaligned, too. I think if I use where the reef, uh, the uh, laser sight is going as a better reference of where I'm aiming, that might make it easier. 
seeing a lot of laser guns right now, which is actually okay with me because that means these guys aren't using MG42s, so that's some pretty good stuff. Come on. Don't have the stopping power to shoot through trees. It's goddamn Vietnam all over again. Anyway, so this one has the uh, scope on it and the uh, two-round burst, but it's uh, not a two-round burst. I may have said that it is, but it actually isn't. You just get the hollow point rounds increased damage, but at a cost of much, much, much lower ammo capacity, which is why we've given it the uh, extra reload speed, sleight of hand perk. The recoil on this thing seems to be a little bit more uncontrollable, and if you're running against multiple foes with this thing, uh, be prepared to reload during your combat engagement. So it might be something to use if you want to have the extra power of this thing, but, you know, not a, not a great in crowd control as a consequence of its uh, small ammo capacity, but it's kind of damage that is not super necessary. There's an MG42 guy. Yeah, you need to go away, mate. That weapon shreds me. I'm tanky as it is normally against vanilla guns, but the MG42, that's scary right there. Alright, enough of this thing suppressed because at this point we've been detected and we're not going to get undetected unless we, you know, crouch here, but we won't. We'll keep on going with the, uh, unsuppressed variant. That's what this thing looks like. It sounds like unsuppressed. I'm hurting for that ace operator bonus there, but we'll continue regardless. And probably a good time enough to uh, show this thing off in bats a little bit. If I'm getting headshots constantly, we should have no problem taking out these guys, because we get the three round burst, so you know, two attacks on them in bats is uh, potentially a six round uh, volley into their faces, which is, uh, you know, if you shot someone in the face six times, probably not getting up, then, you know, for that four, although being a massive bullet sponge sometimes is kindly uh, graced us with the effect of uh, that's going to allow us to kill stuff. So that's helpful. We get a decent look of the uh, sprinting animation now that we're up and about here because I've got nothing else to kill for the moment except for this guy, the low-ranking guy that sits around here. Not a good day to be a gunner private. This would be a classic door breach maneuver. Probably should have remembered to uh, tag Jet so I could pretend that it's one of those Call of Duty door breaches where the thing, the game slows down every door because you know, it's got to be, it's got to be set up like a Hollywood movie, right? We'll keep on going. A little bit on fire right now, but the rain will probably douse the flame, so she'll be right. And I've missed some person up here. Or I've missed you for one. Hit by accuracy on this thing seems to be pretty good. And if you're using uh, this small scrap at the same time, you'll get even better hit by accuracy. The 45 round magazine definitely helps if you've got a poor aim. Ah, oh, you're the gunner with the, uh, the, yes, the tactical gauss rifle. Let me give me that goddamn creation club quest XP dump. Yeah, that's helpful. All right, let's uh, move on to some scary monsters, I suppose. Okay, finally, it's time for the uh, striker to meet my arch nemesis, Mr. Overpowered Stingwing Guy. And I'm not pulling any punches here, mate. You're getting the VATS treatment, and you're not going to like it, are you? Nah, -uh, nah, he's not liking that one bit. Right, he's headed to Mutation Station and has uh, taken a fairly big whack, and now he's going to try to kill me, but that's okay. We uh, haven't taken a hit from him, and if we do, we can activate Nerd Rage and then almost get killed there, but that's fine, because we can just keep on shooting him. If we run out of bullets, just switch to another gun. This one's got the 12 rounds, so it won't last very long, and this one's got the 45 rounds again, and yeah! And we seem to have gotten extra XP out of that. Probably because the uh, raiders that I killed before recording this uh, gave me idiot savant. So, happy days! And uh, we leveled up there, so all of the wounds or the uh, energy shield itself uh, quickly recharge. Isn't that nice? Righto, let's finish this off by killing two of the uh, monsters in the glowing sea back to back in one clip. Let's see how we do with that. Now, the first one is going to be just over this ridge, and he's in the form of a giant noxious uh, ghoul, which is going to detect me right away, because I believe at this point, um, we are in the uh, middle of the day. Now, I'm not lacking this uh, magazine very much, because I'm using the bullets very, very quickly, and not having that two-round burst that I was promised kind of sucks, but that's fine. We've actually uh, managed to get an idiot savant proc out of that, which is helpful, and we managed to nail that 
that Mantis with a Snake Critical. So I've got that installed. Um, they'll replace some of the uh, Blood Bug and other Insect Spawns, which is kind of interesting. As this guy is uh, getting himself in range, we could actually stagger with this thing, but I don't think that 12 round mag is going to cut it. Let's just nail this guy in with bats a little bit, just uh, to get his health a little bit down to a more manageable level. There we go. We are staggering him, so, you know, if we weren't shooting him in bats and just going for center mass like that, we could have done it. The reload on this thing is quick enough to probably hold him off for a decent amount of time, but, you know, making the TTK a little bit quicker using bats as a tool for damage is awesome, and you should do it. Using bats and manual aiming together, is a totally valid way to play and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Now, the next monster is going to be this big boy, the ancient vampiric blood bug dude. And, um, he seems to have been stalled there. And he gets staggered as well, so that's helpful. And this thing with its minimal recoil, and I guess we could just hip fire him as well. Well, we seem to be stopping him in his tracks. And, yeah, the, the uh, giant mantises that you, that you see for a brief moment before they're brutally shot down are taking a little bit of damage. Those guys aren't exactly pushovers. They are the uh, level scaling variants and oh, he's getting closer. I think we're just holding him at bay with staggers and looks like we don't have to use vats at all against him. Well, if I ever need an especially effective counter to those uh, bastard bugs that sit on top of you and keep killing you, and keep eating your ass until your head caves in, looks like I've found the answer. And as for the weapon itself, and that's what a mantis looks like underneath, can I blow it up? Yep. Sure can. Um, with the Mantis mod, you can make the Mantis gauntlets out of the Mantis four legs. That's what they're for. Goodbye, Mr. Vampiric Bloodbug. I don't like mosquitoes, so, you know, you gotta die. So, there you have it. The Striker 45. Another one of these weapons that has been ported from Call of Duty. And I reckon the port is actually pretty good. It adds some decently cool and interesting functionality to a weapon that would... Normally, just have the same sort of receivers as you would see with, like, any vanilla game weapon. Obviously, the consistency is nice, but thinking outside the box and giving you an extra little bit of power here and there and um, adding a different functionality for a weapon which would you know, normally be a little bit more on the mundane side because, look, it's just a UMP-45. We've seen very, very good UMP-45 mods throughout the years, but this thing has managed to set itself apart by having a decently cool uh, idea and functionality. So I would recommend this if you're a COD fan, and if you're not a COD fan and would like to see something a little bit more, I guess, modern and realistic, there are UMP45 mods out there for your downloading pleasure, and I guess they're immersive and lore-friendly because they exist in our world, right? And, uh, yeah. I don't know, ask, ask some lore expert about it. I'm going to give it my seal of approval, even though I don't make 10-hour long videos about lore. Thank you very much for watching, guys. And stick around for my 10-hour lore video series on why my angels are there and around. It's a, it's a cool story. <laughs>